This is the full product lineup of Suron electric dirt bikes for 2023. Starting from the smallest to the largest, we've got the popular lightweight Light BX, the new midsize Ultra B, and the full size Storm B F. And if you've been looking at these three bikes and you're unsure which of them is best for you, well, that is the point of this video. I'm gonna break these three bikes down and we're gonna talk about who they're best for. Before we get into this, if you're looking to purchase any of these Surons, you want to find performance parts for these bikes, or just more information in general, you can find all of those things on electriccycleRider.com, or check the link in the description. We're going to start out with the Suron Light BX. The Light BX is Suron's flagship bike. The first model was introduced to the US market in 2019, and there have been some updates to the battery motor, and specific hard parts, but overall, the Light B is largely unchanged since its introduction. It comes with a super low seat height of 32.6 inches, it weighs 123 pounds, and it has a current MSRP of $4,500. The little Light B X. So this thing is super easy. Turn the key. You've got sport and EP mode, and that's about as simple as it gets. This terrain isn't the most interesting to watch, and because the bike is mostly unchanged since I started riding them back in 2019, I'm gonna replay some footage from the last four years that I've been creating content around the Suron Light BX. I'm gonna jump on the motocross track on this thing. Even though in stock form, I'm not sure that's the best call. But anyways, we're here. So yeah, it's been a while since I've ridden a stock Light BX. And uh, that's probably a great segue for introducing this bike. Because these bikes get modded by almost everyone that gets them in some way or another. Oh. A little short on that. But this is definitely the bike that put Suron on the map. It's their flagship bike, super lightweight, fun little ripper, just like a really good all-around bike. There's so many purposes for this thing. It's basically just, you know, I see it as an electric pit bike, but also a pit bike that you can mod to be a pretty incredible high performance machine too, if you want to throw some money at it. And I think that's why this bike has been so popular. It just caters to so many different groups of people. Fun bike. Oh God, as I come up short on that. Um, I need to get off the track on this thing. There are people that are way more down to send this thing than I am. I uh, get a little apprehensive in stock form on these bikes. So let's get off the motocross track and go ride somewhere else. You know what I'm gonna do on this bike? I'm just gonna play around on it and talk to you guys while I'm doing that because that's probably what the Light B is, is best at, is just playing around. I mean, it's a small bike that's without a doubt, even if you're a smaller adult, like this is a small bike, not to say that you can't ride it, but it's a uh, definitely a play bike and very under the radar. So if you're like, you know, poaching some trails, poaching some riding areas, hitting the streets, that type of thing, 
it's a great bike for that. It's just probably Suron's best all-arounder and it's gonna cater to everybody. Despite the new bikes that Suron is offering, I still think this will continue to be a popular bike among all the riding groups out there. So to wrap this one up, if you're looking to get into electric dirt bikes and you want something to play around on, this is probably the best bike to start out on because it's such a low cost of entry. I think this is the best bike to teach new riders, male or female, young or old, and it's the best all around bike that almost everyone can have fun on. Next up is the new Suron Ultra B. The Ultra B is bigger, faster, and more off-road oriented than the Light B. It has a seat height of 35.8 inches, weighs 187 pounds, and has a current MSRP of $6,500. The new Ultra B. Okay, so this bike has a lot more functionality, which you'll notice right out of the gate. I'm in the process of doing a long-term review on this bike, but I'll tell you briefly about those features right now. The Ultra has regen settings for both the motor and the braking system, traction control, throttle sensitivity settings, and it has three ride modes, which are Eco, Daily, and Sport. Last but not least, the bike also has Reverse. And yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna ride over to the track right now, but man, it's pretty crazy just, I literally just got off of the Light B and just sat on this. And I'm not even, I'm barely riding. I'm just rolling around five miles an hour. And it's just, the ergonomics just feel so different. It starts to feel a lot more like a dirt bike. So this is a bike that I can actually ride on this track here. And this bike is definitely catering more to the off-road crowd, in my opinion. Not to say that like the stunt and urban and dirt jump crowd can't also love the Ultra B, but it's a little bit more obvious that it's a dirt bike. It's bigger, heavier, and yeah, it just feels more like a dirt bike. You guys have been seeing me ride this track a lot lately, especially on this bike, because it's pretty much the only place that's dry in Colorado right now. It is February, and we don't have many options, so I'm not riding up in the mountains like I usually am. Oh, bottom of that fork out. So yeah, Ultra B. Definitely pretty incredible what Suron has done in a short amount of time on this bike. Suron brought this bike to market super quick and it's clear that they've been paying attention to what everybody wants and delivering that with this bike. still feels a little bit like a play bike because it's not a full-size dirt bike. It feels like a big super mini, kind of. I love that about this bike. So yeah, like if you're a former Light BX owner that modified their bike or maybe you just want more out of the Light BX, this is the next step to look for in the Ultra B because it's got everything better, bigger, with more performance for the off-road riders. Or maybe you've just been on the fence in general and been like, oh, I don't wanna buy a light because it's not gonna have what I want, but 
if that's like you, you're probably gonna appreciate this bike a lot more than the light bee. No bike's perfect though, and I'll get into that in the full review. You can watch the first ride on this bike as well. Kind of dissect some of that stuff. Oh, same jump that I'm never able to clear. But not to say that a beginner or you know an intermediate rider can't also have a really good time on this. When you put this bike in eco mode, it's really subdued. And you can ride it really laid back, but it's just bigger. But it's not big, it's like for a full-size adult, it's no big deal. The more time I spend on this bike, the more I love it. And I'd definitely love to get this bike on some more single track, and I will when some of the trails thaw out a little bit, but for now, pretty much just sticking to the uh, MX track here. Really flickable, really fun, and a step up in every sense of the word in the off-road category from the Light BX. A point that I really want to drive home with this bike is the fact that it's a really easy laid back bike to ride, especially when you're in the lower power modes. The biggest thing to notice is that it's a taller and heavier bike. And while most adults and riders with experience will appreciate the bigger chassis that this bike offers, it does require some extra rider input to ride this bike as compared to the Light B. A lot of DNA of the Light B carries over into this Ultra B, making it a super playful, agile bike. But off-road riders that are wanting more out of their Light B, or those that are used to riding traditional dirt bikes, will really appreciate the upgrades on this model. The bigger battery provides more capacity, its full-size seat and more natural ergonomics, paired with proper dirt bike components, makes this bike a more competitive option. Lastly, we have the Storm Bee. This is the biggest bike in the lineup, weighing 280 pounds, with a seat height of 37 inches and an MSRP of $8,500. And the big family member here, the Storm Bee. Storm B has arguably the most functionality within the whole lineup. You've got ABS, you've got traction control, you have different regen levels and braking regen. You've got your turbo mode, reverse, uh, three different riding modes. We'll run it in sport, but uh, there's a lot of complexity, uh, a lot of things that you can tune on this bike, and it's got, you know, full motorcycle, full dirt bike setup. So now just going up in size again, just coming off of the Ultra B, it's definitely immediately apparent how much bigger this bike feels. Taller, softer suspension, all that. I should have probably stiffened this thing up a little bit for the MX track here, but whatever. God. So in my opinion, this is not the best application for the Storm Bee either. Uh, I, I view this as more of a trail bike for sure. Kind of an enduro type bike, dual sport type bike. But here we are. I will say it feels plusher than all three bikes in that kind of choppy, rocky terrain.
2118 wheel combo on this bike. Full size suspension. And the weight to back it all up. It feels like, you know, real dirt bike. I should really stiffen the suspension up for this track, but I might actually just get off of the track because I should be talking about this bike in its proper scenario. Just let it be known. I don't have a ton of options for riding spots right now. And I have done a full first ride review that you guys can check out on the channel. I'll put a link in the description so you can see that. So this stuff is where I feel like the Storm B excels, right here. Not really jumpy stuff, but choppy, potentially faster type of terrain. It's got a really good top speed, and that's kind of why I think it's better on this more wide open, faster stuff. But it's a comfortable bike. It's it's soft, it's easy to ride, plush. And if you're maybe more of a veteran rider, you're used to big dirt bikes, that's what you like. And you want that extra battery range. I think this is a solid bike. It's not crazy high performance. It feels like it wants to be ridden a little bit easier. But it does have the power and potential to get it up and running if you want it to. You would think that the performance would be a step up on each of these models, but I would debate that theory once we get to the Storm B. Despite the fact that the Storm B has the most power, full-size moto suspension, 21-inch front, and 18-inch rear wheel combo, it also has the most weight by a long shot. All of that makes for a strong machine, but I still think the Ultra is the more sporty option. In stock form, the Storm feels like it belongs on two-track roads and dual-sport environments. I've said this in all of my reviews, but it reminds me of a four-stroke trail bike like a DRZ400 with a faster electric powertrain. It begs the question, why would I go with a Storm B when I can get more performance for $2,000 less with an Ultra B? And it's honestly a hard question to answer. The best that I can come up with is that if you're a larger size adult and you prefer the feeling of a full size dual sport with plush suspension and big bike power, but you intend to ride the bike at a more leisurely pace, then the Storm B is probably the bike for you. An idea that I want to test is to modify a Storm B to be a little bit more racy and see how that version of the bike would feel. If you're looking for performance though, my suggestion is that throwing some money at modifying an Ultra B will be the best performance for the price. Okay guys, million dollar question. I can't end this video without telling you which bike I prefer after riding all three of them. And I'll just preface this with the fact that what I like may not be what you like, but if you've watched this channel for long enough, you probably know what I'm all about, and I think a lot of you are on the same page as me. And so, with that being said, if I had to pick one of these three bikes, it's going to be the Ultra B in the middle here, because it is the middle of these two bikes. It takes the best of both worlds, in my opinion, and puts it into a bike that feels like it has the most performance power to weight ratio, and it's the most fun for me to ride. It doesn't feel cramped, it feels comfortable. I feel like I can hit a motocross track, I could ride trails, I can pretty much do everything on this bike, and especially with some modification, even take that a step beyond. All three of these bikes have their own positives and negatives, and 
depending on who you are, all three of these bikes could be good for you. So I hope the video helps explain what these three bikes are all about and hopefully help inform you on making a decision on which of these three electric dirt bikes are best for you. If you have any questions, always please leave it in the comments and I will work to address it. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.